Hello and welcome to Crazy Danish Hacker. Today we're going to look into signal jamming with the Blade RF on the right side, configured with the expansion board, and on the left side we have an RTL SDR to check the transmitted signal. In this video I'm actually using an attenuator on the Blade RF, so I'm not transmitting any signals. So First, we have to install the Blade RF because we're going to start from scratch in this tutorial. So, on the left side, I have the Wikipedia page open. On the right side, I have a Ubuntu VM. So, it's quite easy. First, you open the Wiki page. And then we also open the expansion board page in case we have one of those. And then we need to install some libraries first. So we go down to the Debian and Ubuntu page, or this section. And then we install all the required libraries. I've already done this, so I'm just doing it again to show you how it's done. And we also install the extra libraries and programs. So now we want to clone the source code from GitHub. So we copy the git clone command and the repository where the source code for the BDRF tools are located. In this case, I, I am creating a new directory because I've already installed it once inside this VM. So I'm going to compile and install the tools again from a different directory. And we also need to run CMake. So we have a build type, we have the installation prefix and the UDEV rules as well. So we're just going to run it with the default as they recommend. So we create a new directory called build inside the host directory. And then we run the CMake command as follows. And now we're ready to basically compile the program. So we run it with make j4, and that will compile the program with four simultaneous threads. So now it has finished compiling the libraries and the programs. So now we want to run sudo make install. And next we want to run sudo ldconfig. And now we're ready to use the Blade RF. So we are going to check some devi the device operation, which is basically some basic checks to make sure that it's working. So before we connect it to the virtual machine, we need to make sure that USB 3.0 is enabled for the virtual machine. Otherwise, the Blade RF is not going to work. So now that, now that we have confirmed that it is using USB 3.0, we can connect the Blade RF. And then we can double check with the dmask command. And we can also run the blade rf cli dash p command. So that's the most basic command you can run. And in interactive mode, you can do everything basically. But first, we have to load the FPGA. So you can get the FPGA from the website. And you can also flash it onto the blade rf so you won't have to load it every time. I usually just load it because it's uh, it's part of the fun, I guess. So that's why I just keep it unflashed. It doesn't take long to download. It's only around 1.2 megabytes in size. So you'll be there in no time. 
So in, in the interactive mode again, we can run a few commands to see, for example, we need to load the FPGA and we also need to check that it was loaded. So in this case, we run the help load and then we say load FPGA and then the file name, which you can also tap complete. And after running the version command, you can now see that it says version 0.7.1. So in my case, I also have the expansion board. So I have to run XP200 enable 200. If you have the expansion board and it says zero, a lot of zeros near the direction re register, that means that it's not enabled. So when it's changed, as you can see it is now, that means that the expansion board is enabled. So now we can also use it at frequencies below 300 megahertz in case we wanted to. So the next thing that we can do is that we could set a filter, even though we are not going to use any filters now. So let's take a look at the software tools that we're going to use now. So you use app cache search osmocom, and then we're going to install the gr osmo sdr package. This package has a few interesting tools, which we will look into. So I've already in installed the tools and tested them before this video, even though I've played with them a few years ago. So the FFT and SIG gen are the tools that we're going to be looking into. So the FFT tool is basically a tool where you can see interesting activity on the radio frequency spectrum, I guess. So we have a few interesting options. We have persistence, we have the average option, peak hold, traces, and the, the gain, the LNA gain, the low noise amplifier gain, VGA one and two, frequency bandwidth sample rate. And we can also record files as well, so that's pretty cool. So if we go to, for example, 952 megahertz, and then select 10 uh, million in bandwidth, or 10 megahertz in bandwidth, then we can see that we have some channel hopping going over there, maybe, and a downstream channel here, here, and also at 954, so that's pretty accurate. And you can also see in the top left, or top right, sorry, that we have some actual channel hopping going on. So that's pretty cool as well. It's not SDR sharp, but it is pretty cool. So we can also take a look at the Wi-Fi band, for example, 2.4 gigahertz. But it's not just the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, it's also a bit higher than that. So, for example, we have to select 20 megahertz bandwidth, and that's because the Wi-Fi packets are quite uh, large, so that's why we, we select 20 megahertz. And now I'm adjusting the frequency, so we can find, uh, we can have a better look, for example, at how it looks like. So... That's basically it. Uh, if you have a Blade RF or a Hack RF, try and look at the Wi-Fi packets. They, it lo they look quite interesting. So the next thing that we want to look at is the actual signal generation tool, which you can also use for jamming. Now keep in mind that jamming is uh, generally not something you should do outside a lab or in a very controlled environment. So be very careful. Uh, it's not recommended to do outside a lab. So in this case, you can set the frequency, the frequency offset, the gain. Now in this case, I'm just setting it all down, even though I also have an uh, attenuator on the transmission port on the Blade RF. So there's not going to be any anything transmitted, but I'm also making sure that it's just turned down anyway. So let's pretend that we are tr transmitting a signal. So right now it would look normal. So what happens is when you transmit a Gaussian 
noise signal. It will gener generally look like this. Now I've only selected 2 megahertz or 2 million in bandwidth. But uh, in case you had like for example 5 or 4 or something like this. Then it would also look ex then it would almost look like what I'm showing on the screen, especially the waterfall, where everything looks the same to the blade RF. So that's basically what's going to happen when you jam a signal. And for a cell phone, for example, if you jam it and it's on 4 GHz, then you jam the 4 GHz, then maybe you have to jam the 3 GHz signal, and then finally it will fall back to 2 GHz, so you have to jam the phone at least two times in many cases. So that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned and subscribe.